Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discuss Agile, a conference. I am your host, Albert, currently with Avinash Rao in Google Hang Hangouts, who wants to speak to you about uh, his topic on no estimate. Let us understand from him more on what does he mean by no estimate and how he convinces his customers having a planning meeting without an estimate um, of the without an estimate uh, of when the uh, work will be completed. Okay. Hey, Avinash, welcome to the Discuss Agile conference. Uh, hi, Albert. Uh, hi. Great to be speaking to you again. And uh, always good to be part of the Discuss Agile community. Yeah, welcome. Uh, so Thanks. can you tell something about your, yourself and uh, what, what are we going to talk about as no estimate? Sure, absolutely. So let me start by talking a little bit about myself. Um, I started life off as a developer, moved to an analyst, a consultant. I've played various roles, program management, etc. And then got bitten by the agile bug about seven years ago. Uh, did a lot of work with traditional Scrum and then uh, moved a little bit more towards the lean and the Kanban side. And uh, in my current professional avatar, I'm, I've actually taken up a business role. Uh, so I'm uniquely, I think, positioned to understand and appreciate the pressures that businesses are under working directly with our customers and being responsible for the P&L side of things as well. Otherwise, I think inside IT, sometimes we can be in a little bit of a uh, bubble ourselves. And uh, so I think that um, has given me a perspective of the pressures that are there on the business. And uh, that is something that I want to address uh, to the Discuss Agile community as part of the No Estimates discussion. OK, so that's very nice. Uh, so what is this No estimate, estimate is about? Can you cover some of the basics of No Estimate yes. for our community? Yes. OK, so uh, one of the things I've always wondered is you have a project where a developer or a technical lead comes up with an estimate. And then there is a lead buffer. And then the PM adds a buffer. It goes to the account manager. The account manager adds a buffer. And then we still don't seem to be able to finish our IT projects on time. Okay. Uh, there's this continuous pressure on projects. And all of them still seem to start off uh, at a slow pace. And then they gather steam. And then towards the end, uh, people are working crazy hours. Um, it's, it's a very typical um, situation that you see across a lot of the projects that we are in. And I'm sure the entire Discuss Agile community will be familiar with uh, such exactly. projects. Exactly. Uh, you've not been on too many of those. Um, but a lot of the thinking behind that is based on averaging. We assume that we have a certain ability to model estimates and forecasts based on our past experience. So a developer knows uh, how long he or she have taken in the past to perform a several uh, to a certain piece of work. And based on that, they come up with uh, some sort of um, heuristic which allows them to give you an estimate. And then you add a bunch of estimates, uh, buffers on top, and still projects are late. That just doesn't make sense, right? If yes, there's so much is. buffers in there, why would projects still be late? I've actually been on large projects where there have been 30 to 40 percent buffers because it was a fixed bid project and people didn't want commercial risk. But they followed exactly the same pattern that uh, things would start off slowly and then suddenly towards the end there's this massive rush and then there is this storm of defects that comes in right at the end when testing uh, starts and then everyone's scrambling to fix the problem. So fundamentally, um, you could blame IT, you could blame developers, you could blame the PM, as a lot of people do. But I think it's more fundamental than that. It is actually in the way we are creating some of these estimates. And um, no estimates is one, uh, one approach which says, look, guys, there's only so much value that an estimate can add. So why not get do away with it altogether? Or if you are in a mood for less radical options, Use it as a guideline rather than a significant commitment. Uh, does it make sense in terms of the need for no estimates? 
Yes, and, it uh, looks like uh, it makes sense. There is an entire community out there, and if you Google hashtag no estimates, you'll find a bunch of discussions um, that have already happened on the topic. But this is something that I've been experimenting with and working with for the past few years, and I wanted to share that with the discussion. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is when we speak about estimation. Uh, most times, where the roles that you said like DM, DH, AM. are coming from the service industry so is uh -huh. your topic is related to the service industry people not related to product development cycle people that's an interesting question i actually think this is more relevant for uh, product development uh, because that's where the real value is if you look at the services side of things especially the um, maintenance portion a lot of people have adopted techniques like kanban uh, they've done the visualization some of those benefits have come in already but the product development side the feature development side is actually ripe for using a tool like this in order to significantly improve uh, the amount of uh, throughput and flow that they are able to generate and that's something that people have not um, i think adopted or thought about as much as people on the services or the maintenance side have so i will be talking um, in the conference Uh, assuming of course that you guys will have me um about an example from the development side because i think that's a question that a lot of our community will have okay so oh, thanks for the quick introduction on no estimate uh just a quick question isn't the uh, isn't scrum already addressing some of these issues whatever you said about aha yes that's the interesting question isn't it so yes. when scrum started and you had all these teams which had uh, which which got time to come together and then you saw that these teams over time became very very skilled at knowing exactly how much they were able to produce yes such teams typically you will see that they are able to create um, a fairly decent um, estimate of how much a certain feature will take the problem isn't with the team the problem is with the nature of work itself so if you believe that a lot of our it work is emergent meaning that you get into it and then you realize hey you know what this isn't like what we did last time there is this entirely new interface that needs to be created and then there is a dependency on some other team and uh, there's also dependency on other people uh, which aren't necessarily there's no way to be able to forecast a priori with 100% accuracy the entire map and so there is this emergence as you go in and uh, there's a little bit of dealing with that emergence what's happening with the scrum community often is that uh, you have teams which are interestingly mini waterfalling and uh, we you'll see that they start off slow then there's a crazy rush towards uh, the delivery date and that isn't what customers want customers want agility we are giving them iterative development we give giving them scrum but what customers really want is agility and I, that i think is uh, I, i'm not i'm not sure i blame scrum and its principles entirely for that but it also has to do with the way we are implementing it uh, particularly at scale particularly in large product development teams and in large uh, services or right right, right right okay so that's nice uh, and i do agree with you on uh, multiple things it is not in the team and all the stuff but with the customers who are focused on the end date when you say no estimate isn't that hard to convince them to come into this model of when it will be completed without a, uh, they are entering into a zone where they don't know when the product or uh, development will be completed yes so isn't that hard um i'm glad we're having this conversation around halloween because this is a bit of a dark art uh, you have to be able to give customers enough confidence and uh, give them a view in in some of these agile techniques they call them envelopes you have an envelope by when a certain uh, bit of work will be delivered and this is really an aggregation of many many uh, features or uh, defects depending on what you're working on but the envelope over time you'll realize is where um the averaging really kicks in and you'll find that teams which have been following this over time you'll be able to make reasonable commitments 
but the reality is that we live under an illusion of control uh, that people believe that we are able to predict today in our waterfall and in our agile projects that we can deliver something on a particular day and often it's an illusion and what we are essentially doing is getting rid of some of that illusion and saying here's what's really coming to you. Uh, here's what you're actually getting um, obviously we will spend time in the conference working on this particular aspects because it's really important to be able to communicate and convince a customer uh, but also uh, i'm going to spend a little bit of time in the conference on working out how to convince your internal stakeholders because you'll be surprised that sometimes customers see the value a lot faster and easier than um, our own internal stakeholders and no matter what sort of a company you're in uh, so we need to talk about that as well okay so uh, if that is the case in the scenario of uh, new freshers joining into our organizations into our projects and uh, who don't know much okay. of our development of the product and things like that wouldn't know estimate create a halo around the completion time frame how do you handle those scenarios? I think uh, what happens today, particularly with the freshers that you're talking about, is that they come in and they have an estimate, which maybe the lead has given them, if you're talking about real freshers. Yes. And the lead has said, hey, you've got one week to work on it. And um, he or she spends two days figuring out what to do, looks through the design documents. And before you know it, it's day three. They start coding. They get stuck. They ask for help. The first time a project manager realizes, and this is in a very traditional setting, that there is trouble is when that feature does not come from the developer on day five. Exactly. The estimate is day five, and on day five, the feature isn't there. And then people start diving in. Then the uh, lead comes in, then you get experts in to help, and they are fresher, item kyodia, and all those discussions start. Um, the beauty of no, of no estimates is if the same situation was in a no estimate um, project what would happen is the at the end of the first day the pm or the lead would go to the developer and say is it done say no i haven't even started on it i've been reading this day two is it done because there's no five days it's it takes as much time as it takes yes that becomes uh, a micromanagement uh, when they come continuously it's it's interesting you say that and uh, that's one thing that we must uh, talk about is that a lot of uh, techniques that we're using in our industry um, whether you talk about daily stand-ups or you stand in front of a kanban board two times a day uh, do come under this category called uh, micromanagement the other item uh, the other way to look at that is visibility yes so visibility micromanagement i think it's the it's the way it needs to be implemented if you don't do that in a collaborative environment i think it can very quickly become micromanagement okay, okay okay so okay. If we, given the scenarios uh, isn't this better for support and support type of activities uh, i think we spoke a little bit about that earlier on in our discussion and i will actually come up with a couple of specific examples of how this works in a product development scenario and this is definitely uh, like i said very ripe for um, implementation in a development scenario simply because people haven't adopted a lot of these techniques yeah. as much as they have in the support yeah system. okay so thanks avinash on this uh, before we close the interview, uh, tell us more about the benefits that our community members would get by attending No Estimate Session and what is there for them? Absolutely. And it's always about the bottom line, isn't it? Yes. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about uh, because your customers care only about the bottom line at the end of the day. Uh, that's why we are in, um, in business, in IT. And uh, what, we, what you will get away from this session is an understanding of where we are failing with our traditional method. You will get a, get an understanding of what this approach is, no estimates, and uh, how this can be applied in our current IT context. I'll talk a little bit about product development. I'll talk about support so that we cover the entire gamut. And uh, that, sh that I think will help people really see how this has been applied in various situations and hopefully give them food for thought about how this can be applied in their own day-to-day -day lives. Okay. 
okay so you would be covering from the start to the end of that complete development yes uh, absolutely yeah. okay yeah okay thanks thanks avinash on this uh, so guys uh, you got the glimpse about what is no estimate and how is it going to be useful if you attend the session so what do you guys think about it like it share it comment about it thank you thanks and, albert yes well, thanks avinash uh, i see you thanks oh, I hope I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, bye. Right. Bye. bye. bye.